Our text is from the book of Genesis, the 21st chapter, beginning with the first verse. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son who was born to him, whom Sarah bore to him, Isaac. Then Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Now Abraham was 100 years old when his son Isaac was born to him. And Sarah says, God has made me laugh, and all who hear will laugh with me. She also said, who would have said to Abram that Sarah would nurse children? For I have borne him a son in his old age. Here ends the word. Heavenly Father, sanctify us in the truth, your word's truth. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I'm sure that you know the rest of this story. Over a year before this, God had visited Abraham and said, your wife, who's 89 years old, is going to have a son. She's going to be pregnant, and a year from now, your son will be born. And Sarah, listening to this in her tent, laughed. Yeah, right. She had given up hope. From her standpoint, this was impossible. At 89 years old, her cycles had stopped. There was no way that this could happen as far as she was concerned. So she laughed. Sarah's response to the message is quite different from Mary's response about having a child, isn't it? And if we look at everything that's going on in our world right now, we might be tempted to, to say, there's no way. There's a lot of people who've given up hope. There's a lot of us that wonder what Christmas is going to look like at our house. Are we going to be able to see our friends and family? Are we going to have a regular Christmas? And if we have a Christmas, what's it going to be like this year? And so we can understand how Sarah felt. I don't know how many 89-year-olds you ladies would have somebody come to you and say you're going to have a baby in a year. You might laugh. Hearing a little bit too much agreement with that. That's so we understand and we can see Sarah's response. When God spoke and said she would have a child next year, she flat out laughed. You've got to be kidding me. We can add or put any colloquial phrase in from our day and age. Maybe even an expletive or two. Yeah, right. For years, Sarah had been barren. She'd even decided that she needed to help God. So she gave her maid, Hagar, to her husband to have a child with. Because she had given up. She had heard the promises before. She'd been hearing them for 20-some years, 25 years roughly. 
when she was still able to have a child according to her body. And she was at a point in her life when having a child should have been impossible. Mary, on the other hand, was just beginning. She hadn't even gotten married yet. And so when the angel came to her and told her that she was going to have a baby, she didn't understand how that could be possible. It wasn't that she doubted. It was that she just didn't understand. How can I get pregnant? I'm not married yet. I haven't been with a man. And so she asked the question, how can this be? Then Gabriel told her that she would become pregnant by the Holy Spirit. That it would take an act of God. Just like it did for Sarah. And even though it was impossible under her circumstances... We know that with God, nothing is impossible. And Mary did not laugh, but she in faith responded to God, let it be to me as you have said. How are we approaching Christmas this year? You know, it, it's interesting. It's from one standpoint, people might say, well, Christmas just isn't going to be Christmas this year. As if Christmas was some outside force. Something that we have nothing to partake of or do with. I don't know if you are like me, but I've been listening to a lot of Christmas music already. One of the songs that's playing on the radio right now is, Where is Christmas? As we expect it to happen to us. The truth is that Christmas has already happened to us. Isn't it? And we can look around at all the stuff going on in the world and we can complain about things, the pandemic and all the consequences, how frustrating it is that we feel alone and locked up, claustrophobic, perhaps, that we don't get to see our loved ones as much as we want to or would normally do. You can go nuts watching the television and seeing all the issues and the politics and everything going on in our government. We listen to reports constantly about the economy, about jobs, about health care, about investments, about job loss. Heard an interesting statistic that since the pandemic started, one out of every six restaurants in California has been shut down permanently. If we drive downtown, we can see the consequences of what's going on in our world. Businesses closed because of the rioting and the fires and the looting. There's riots going on in our country still today. There's hatred, fighting, intolerance. And it can get depressing. My wife and I had just gotten married at the end of August, 12 days before 9-11 happened. And Julie and I had just gotten home from our wedding and our short honeymoon to my apartment in Oregon. 
And all she had to do, because she didn't have a job yet, was watch TV for those next five, six days. And all that was on TV was that same old thing, the footage of the planes coming in and crashing and the buildings falling and the destruction, the number tolls. And it got to the end of the week as I had gone back to work doing the things that I needed to do. She got to the point where, can we leave our house please and go do something, anything? I just got to get away from the TV. Well, guess what I'm reminded of in the last couple of weeks, in the last several months? That same feeling has been building in our house. We got to get away. We got to go do something fun. Because we can't live in that. Consider, on the other hand, the joy of that birth, both for Sarah. Sarah got something she wanted for so, so long that she got to hold that little boy close to him, nursing him, caring for him. And it didn't matter that she didn't believe God when he promised that child the last time. Because God doesn't need us to approve or to do anything that he gives us power. Sarah had been embarrassed. She'd been ashamed. She had failed her husband. But we see quite a different Sarah in our text today. She said, not only am I laughing, everybody who hears about this is going to laugh. Laugh with me instead of at me. Rejoice with me. Sarah's how old and she finally had a child? Mary, on the other hand, we're told, pondered all these things in her heart. Looked at that little child and wondered what it all meant. How could these shepherds come and worship him the day he was born? The very night. How precious is this child that angels have come and visited me and my husband to tell of his birth. One of the songs that I'm sick of listening to already on the radio is Mary, Did You Know? Scripture answers that question. She pondered all these things in her heart. What does this child mean? He would be great. He would be the Messiah. He would be the one that the world had been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for. And there would be those that hadn't given up hope. Who also rejoiced in the birth of this child, even strangers, foreigners. who would travel miles and miles and miles to come and worship the baby born, the Messiah who had finally come. So we ask ourselves, how are we going to celebrate Christmas? By complaining that it's a little different this year? By doubting? Is God still there? Doesn't he see what's going on? Or 
by knowing that our Lord keeps his promises. Whether we listen to them or not, his word is true. Lord, as we approach the celebration of your birth, fill our hearts with the joy of knowing that that little baby came, that he accomplished his goal, that when he said, it is finished, He had accomplished everything for us. Given us life. Given us hope. Given us light. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all our human understanding, let that peace be with our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting.